This is an HP Elite Book Folio something. I, I don't actually even remember exactly what it is because it's over here. Um, what are you? Elite Book Folio 9480M. And I, um, I both, I simultaneously respect and hate this computer. This video is probably going to be a little ranty. Thus the cocktail. So, if you just want some kind of a strictly technical video that doesn't really get uh, silly and amusing and annoyed, maybe go to another channel. I'm sorry. But, for those of you who wish to stay and hear me complain about this computer and life in general, I think you will be pleased with tonight. So, here's what's going on. This computer, oh my god, the story behind this computer. This, this thing is, um, possessed. I think I'm gonna call it possessed. You see, this machine, this piece of computing technology, it has decided um, that when it is disassembled like this, like, I'm not kidding, this, this is all, it works. It works fine. E everything about this is fine right now. <clears throat> I can take this, I can plug an AC adapter in there, I can plug, where is it? Yeah, a uh, display port screen in there, and a USB whatever, and this thing boots right up, straight into Windows 10, everything works perfectly fine. I was able to get the user's encrypted data. Again, don't tell me Microsoft doesn't encrypt things without asking, because everything was encrypted. I was able to get their encrypted data, which the key is in the TPM, which is built into the system, so they had no way of getting it because they couldn't get into their Microsoft account, and they almost lost everything. But it works this way. The way I know it worked this way was this is the HP keyboard. You know, it may be so you can see it. This is the HP keyboard, and the way that HPs complain about things like memory issues is there's a caps lock light, and here there's a num lock light. And uh, I don't know if you're watching this in 4K or what, but if you are, you can see the tiny dots, teeny tiny dots on these two keys, where my thumbs are. These flash a certain number of times to tell you what's wrong, or what the motherboard perceives as wrong. Now here's where it gets really friggin' weird. These memory sticks here are the sticks that came with it. One of them's the one that came with it from the factory. One's an upgrade. Uh, but the point is, to me, these are the ones that came with it. When this computer is fully assembled, you know, all this, this whole sandwich is put together, whatever. <coughs> I'm sorry uh, for the coughing, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm on the tail end of a nasty uh, cold kind of thing. When this is assembled... This whole thing stops working. It flashes three times. These lights on this keyboard flash three times, which means there is a problem with the memory sticks. I've tried every combination of one or both of these in each of these slots. I've tried about three or four other sticks. Nothing changed. But you take this whole computer apart and you hook this thing up with only the keyboard because it's got this independent barrel jack here right so you can hook up power and then you can have it flipped over with the power hooked up and you can take the keyboard and hook it up here so you can see the diagnostic lights right you hook it up right here well i did that and i was able to not get the flashes and one of the ways that i test computers to see if they are functioning and responding normally is i hit caps lock the caps lock light toggling when you press the key tells you that the computer is responding. Now, why is that? Because this keyboard does not control its caps lock light. <clears throat> this thing does not have any control over its own LED. When it does this, the computer is seeing the key, running code in the CPU that toggles this LED and sends the new LED state to the keyboard. So the CPU actively has to run a program to toggle your caps lock light. Caps lock is my number one way of seeing if a computer 
is at least processing on the most basic level or if there is a more deep hardware problem that I need to know about. So, this computer works when disassembled, doesn't work when assembled. Why? I don't know. And to be completely honest, I don't care. Um, all I wanted to do was recover the customer's data, but it doesn't work when assembled, and it's been assembled more than once, and I don't know if you can see, but yeah, all these screws here, yeah, th th all this goes to this. Th these screws here, these alone are the screws that hold just the plate over the board. Hold on just a moment. This thing doesn't work when it's assembled, and it's a pain in the butt to assemble. The reason I'm not doing a disassembly video is I'm tired of disassembling it. I'm not doing another disassembly just to show you. Uh, screw that. If you need to know how to disassemble this computer, what you need to do is look at what I'm doing here and do the reverse. I know that that makes it a pain in the butt, but I'm sorry, I am absolutely never doing this again. Screw this. I'm, I'm never doing it again. I, I don't ever want to disassemble this computer again in my life. So... I'm putting this headphone jack in. You probably saw me bend the board a bit to get the headphone jack in the hole. Then there's other holes here that start to align things, okay? This speaker wire right here, this speaker wire has screwed me up. I actually had to do a partial disassembly to get it back out from under everything. Make sure this speaker wire is revealed. When you're putting this thing back together, it is such a pain. Reassembly is often worse than disassembly. And boy, is this bad. Another thing. See, I've already got another problem right here. See that? That's the screen. That's not supposed to be under there. Although, you can't really put it back together without forcing it if that's under there. So, it's pretty obvious that that big fat cable's under there, right? We got the display cable here. This DC jack will eventually go where it belongs. But for right now, you just need to know there's a hole here. Um, this fan also, we could already... Uh, if we really felt like it, we could go ahead and screw this fan down here if we really want to. Although there's another screw that goes into it, so that's not necessarily the best idea, but there you go. Um, let's see here. Two small screws hold the actual motherboard. Notice once I got this in, everything else just sort of falls into place. This red wire is your only big problem. So we're going to go ahead and pop these two screws here. These two short. These are Torx. What are they? Uh, no, these aren't Torxes. What are these? Why are there two Phillips here? I seem to recall there being some Phillips floating around. Anyway, I don't... Were, were Phillips holding the board? I think they might have been. It's been a while. Um, it's been several hours since I did this, so I don't remember. But yeah, two Phillips, I guess. Right here, where the arrows are. There are two white arrows on the board. You may be able to see them. There's an arrow right here. There is an arrow right here. And those tell you that that's where the two screws go. Now... As long as this red wire is up, you're good to go. Tuck it under the board after you stick it in the connector. You know, no big deal. By the way, I have a new setup. This monitor, you can't see it, but... <coughs> Excuse me. This monitor up here um, lets me see what the camera sees, except it's like a 28-inch monitor or something. I don't know. Or 24. So it, it's very handy because I can see exactly what you're going to see on the video. It's not in 4K quality, where I have it, but hey, it gets the job done, so who cares? So this is the frame. The way that these expensive Elite books, which I kind of both respect and hate, the way they go together is you have an upper chassis, which is where your keyboard is, and the board goes into it. Then you have this sort of lower chassis that screws into it with a billion screws, or at least it feels like a billion by the time you get it all done. These Wi-Fi and WAN antennas, they go through here. Um, there aren't really any other wires that go through the frame. Thank God, because everything that goes through the frame is annoying. So at least I don't have to do that. Get the frame to kind of sit flat. It's not going to sit flat, but it needs to at least kind of sort of feel like it, huh? Yeah, so push it down. 
I think there's actually a clip right there. And um, when I first disassembled this, I may have broken one of the plastic clips that holds this whole frame assembly down. Because it's annoying. It, it really just is annoying. Now, there's a ton of these. These are all... These are all Torx. Um, what size Torx is this, actually? It is a T8. This is a Torx T8, and these are all M2 by 5 screws. And they're labeled as such all over the place. Um, this one I'm doing right here also goes through the DC jack. You should probably be able to see that pretty well from where you are. That one goes through the DC jack hole, so that mounts the jack. There's another one over here. I like to get the corners done first because that kind of holds everything down so that it doesn't move anymore. And all of the corners on this are M2x5. They're all labeled M2x5. You cannot put the wrong lengths of screws into this computer because everything is labeled exactly what it is. Now that feels like it might be cross-threading. One of the big negatives of this is that um, these machines, while they have all the screws nicely labeled, things are pretty darn clear cut. Um, at the same time, they also are a real pain to get the screws to actually go into. Like, this thing's wobbling all over the place. I'm actually having quite a difficult time getting this screw to fall into its threads. So one of the really nasty things about these Elite Book folios is you're going to have a hard time getting these screws into their actual grooves where they need to go. All right, so let's go ahead and get all the perimeter screws. One of the tricks that I use, by the way, to find the start of these threads where things are kind of ambiguous and annoying is to roll them backwards counterclockwise until I hear that click. That click tells me if I start turning now, it's going to catch a thread. And even if it's a little hard to turn, I'm not cross-threading it. Oop. So whatever I'm doing, I'm at least not going to damage anything. Uh, more 2 by 5s Yep. They're all over the place. I mean, the whole perimeter of this thing is absolutely full of these screws. It's ridiculous, to be honest. It's, it's quite ridiculous. <sighs> they are all over the place. And they're like, they're in recessed holes. They're just, they're everywhere. The only good thing, as I have said before, is if you look, you'll notice there is M2 by 5. It's written right beside it. So if you look for all these little inscriptions, all these little engravings of M2 by 5 into the frame, the subframe, if you will, you will always find all the screws and you will always find the holes to put them back into and they have the sizes specified. <coughs> so doing the actual reassembly is pretty darn easy. Um, you don't have to worry too much about putting the wrong screw in the wrong place. There are only two sizes of screw that hold this subframe in place and there are 2x3 and 2x5 they're labeled as to what they are if you put the wrong screw in the wrong hole it's because you're either really naive or really stupid so yeah get that a little brighter I think it's too dark with all these black screws in black metal alright M2x5 it just keeps going, baby. The M2x5 train does not stop. Non-stop flight. Those are threes. There should be a few more 2x5s just sort of floating around here. There's a 2x5 there that I missed. And it's easy to miss them if you're just going fairly quickly. But it's also easy to hit them um, if you're paying attention. This one right here. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the threes are kind of in this general area, this, this battery area. So there's a three here. There's a three over here. They're all labeled. It's super duper easy. It's almost a waste of time to even show it to you in real time on video. But yeah. 
So this machine was possessed, but it worked without um, anything plugged into the board other than power and a USB keyboard. And I had the regular keyboard so I could see the flash codes. But that's it. <coughs> so because of that and because it would work normally with nothing plugged in, I recovered the customer's data using an external monitor and keyboard. And uh, this thing is actually pretty locked down by some corporate policy crap that the customer has no control over. Um, by the way, make sure that that wire... I actually made a mistake, and here, here's where things get ugly. I made a mistake, and I just realized it. I didn't plug in this other speaker, and the funny thing about that is that I actually made the opposite mistake the last time I reassembled it, and this is the reason I hate these computers, even though... I also love them. I love that their reassembly and such is actually pretty darn simple. It's not hard to figure out how to do it. What I hate about these computers is that while the reassembly's uh, simple, it's also really friggin' annoying if you miss something. And it's easy to miss something because they're all teeny tiny wires and connectors. Very easy to just not see. Oops. Didn't see it. Duh. And uh, there you go. Look at all the and look at all the screws I'm going to have to take out just to get to this one connector. I don't even know exactly how many I have to take out to get to this connector, but the last time I missed one, I had to take out quite a few. So, the connector I missed is a speaker connector on this side. And the thing is, I got to be honest here, um this this guy probably doesn't care. I actually could probably just not even bother putting this all back and the guy would never notice because this computer doesn't work. But the problem that I have is that I suffer from a degree of integrity. And when you have integrity, or if you're a South Park fan, just integrity, you want to uh, do things right. Yeah, see this one clip right here is actually holding it all down and I can't get it out. It's stuck because this one clip right here is in the way. Oh my God, you have to actually get it out from the other side to Complete. Nope. There we go. I cleared it. Cleared it with a pry tool. So here we go. You probably can't see it, but... Oh, where are you? Where are you? Crap, it's under the motherboard. It's under the motherboard. Let me get a dental pick. Maybe I can get it out with a dental pick. It's under the board. It may never come out of there, either. Get out of there. Get out of there, you scumbag. Ah! Well, that went well, didn't it? I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but it's dumb. It's so dumb. I shouldn't have to do this. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Chances are this computer... You know what? I'm making an executive decision. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bothering. I'm not putting that back. I'm just, I'm just not. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. I know for a fact this computer will not work. It will be dead when I give it back to him. I cannot... I just... I can't put that much work into getting a connector reconnected when I know the computer won't even work. Frankly, I didn't want to reassemble it. But honestly, I kind of felt bad. Felt like, dude, if I don't reassemble this, then that's just... That just it, It's just not right. Put it back together, man. And record it. Yeah, anyway. It's been really frustrating, man. Doing computer repair can be very frustrating. Uh, for reasons like this. Because sometimes you make the slightest mistake. I would have had to take the board. I would have had to take most of the screws, if not all of them, back out. And that's a lot of time for poor little sick old me coughing into my poor viewer's ears to continue coughing into my poor viewer's ears. All for a machine that I know for a fact is not going to function. This thing is screwed. This thing is not going to work when I give it back to the customer. It is flat out not going to work. It will be dead. And there is nothing that anybody can do about it. Wait a minute, M2x5? Did I lose 
a two by five screw somewhere? I, how did this happen? There is a two by five screw missing. What did I do? Oh boy, did I do something dumb? I bet I did. It wouldn't surprise me if I did something stupid. Let's see, did I, no? Dude, I don't know. I don't know where that screw is. I don't know where I put it. I don't know if I put it in a hole. It's not supposed to go in or what. But, um, yeah. Although there really aren't many holes that they can go in. So if I did, I'm not entirely sure how. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to worry about that. So all the 2x5s are back. We have a keyboard. We need to do the keyboard. Let's do the keyboard. We'll do the Wi-Fi antenna shortly, but let's do the keyboard for now. All right, hopefully you can see that. First of all, before the keyboard, you see this this right here hides a couple of connectors. Flip them up. Use a pry tool or whatever to kind of bend the flat cable so that it can go into its socket here. Come on. Try to be gentle with it, but you are going to have to slightly, slightly, slightly manhandle it to go down into the socket. Slightly. Come on, go into the socket. There you go. All right. That's in the socket. Okay. Let me do a refocus real quick. Just to... There you go. Okay. Now, get this other one to kind of bend down, go into the socket into the socket yes please there we go okay now the keyboard on this has three wires I don't know why but it does BL we can assume is the backlight so BL here goes in here and flip down. This is the main data cable for the keyboard, fairly obviously. Get flipped up. Okay. Push it in and flip it down. And then the last wire for this keyboard is this one, which appears to go to the track point. It is really, really hard to get this to go where it belongs. You kind of sort of have to manhandle it a bit. But if you can get that, make sure that's flipped up, and then slide it in. You may have to give it a little force. Click it down. All good. Now, you have to pivot carefully so as not to lose any of those connections. And this is a weird one. The top things are actually really hard to get in. So you kind of have to taco the keyboard under itself here. Get the top clips in first. Then worry about the side clips once the top ones are in. There we go. All hooked up. Boom. Now. Over here, we have our little complex of wireless antennas. Yeah. And they are awful to put back. You have to put the shorter ones under a tab over here first put the shorter ones in first the longer ones have already fallen in the hole first so pull the shorter ones pull them pull them push them in get in there all right then the longer ones and now for the longer ones to go in they got to go first. Woo! So the longer ones go in the second tab first, and the shorter ones, they basically go in the reverse order. Then find your main, which is black, Wi-Fi antenna connector here. It goes to the main, which is closer to the screw. I can't tell you how to put these on. They are a pain. You will just have to put them on and be gentle, because if you're not gentle trying to push them down, you are basically guaranteed to break them 
Uh, fingernails are pretty much mandatory if you're going to do this with your hands like I'm trying to do right now. And uh, this would be a lot easier if I wasn't on camera. So I'm going to try to position it with a pry tool a bit here. And then push down on it. Because why the hell not? Come on, be nice to me. Yep, that's not going to work. It really is a pain. Putting Wi-Fi antennas down is easily one of the worst chores. I I really prefer not to remove Wi-Fi antennas at all. And you know what? I might apply the same logic where I just don't bother because this this is not fun. This this Wi-Fi antenna thing is one of the worst parts of doing a computer disassembly. It wasn't quite as bad back when you had the big chunky PCI cards, but uh, these little M2 style PCI Express cards have these teeny, teeny, tiny Wi-Fi antenna connectors that are so little that you can't get the godforsaken things to go down. It is, it is easily the worst task ever. I'm trying to just get one to go down. You have to target it almost exactly right. And you almost have to like pivot it down. And I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. You feel it click when it's right, but the problem is if it's not exactly right, it just comes right up because it's not right. So yeah, I don't like it. And sometimes you can't even feel it. I mean, it really is awful. Whoever came up with this is a douchebag. And that's all I can really say about it. Douchebag. Why would you do this to me? Why are you doing this to me? I don't know who you are, but why you gotta do this to me? Who designed this crap? You couldn't, you couldn't make the connector a little bigger? Just the slightest bit bigger? So that this thing's the slightest bit more serviceable? And then I got all these wires here that need to be kind of shoved around and... You probably didn't even see most of what I did there, but the end result is the antennas are hooked to the Wi-Fi card. The antennas for the card that doesn't exist are just sort of there. <sighs> Plug the CMOS battery back in. A useless exercise. And there's not much else to this. It's uh, pretty much done... There is an SSD that goes in here. It it kind of falls vertically in here. You'll notice that this SSD has a right angle adapter. And it's actually supposed to go straight down. And get screwed down with four screws. And the holes are awful and don't align properly. So it's actually really hard to screw the stupid thing back together. Good lord. What a pain. Just getting these screws to go in their original holes here is, is just like pulling teeth. Who comes up with this garbage? I don't know, but I don't want to, uh, I don't ever want to meet them. Anyway, so that's that. It's reassembled except for the plates. And these plates, uh, oh yeah, I forgot one thing. The keyboard has four screws, if I recall correctly. There's one here, and they all have little pictures of keyboards on them with arrows pointing at the screw holes. One here, one here. Because it's, it, you know, the keyboard's held in with really strong plastic clips, so of course we also need four extra screws to also hold the keyboard in. Because it's a business class computer, and you know, if it doesn't have a bazillion screws, then obviously it's not business class. Business class, yeah. Honestly, it's, it's machines like this one that make me appreciate the uh, new style of a machine where instead of having all these doors and plates, it's just one big cover on the bottom. And then it's one big frame on the top and that's it. And there's not any of this weird stuff going on. 
It's just, you know, you want to get to the RAM, the hard drive, SSD, CPU, heat sink, whatever. You take one big plate off the back, pop, you're done. There is nothing else to it. But no, no, we can't have that. This thing is a little older. So, of course, of course, this godforsaken broken thing is going to have three plates, th well, two plates, and one of them, the battery, is actually the plate. And that's been replaced. This is old enough, it's got a replaced battery. Jesus. All right. Things reassembled, for better or worse. Probably for worse. So, yeah. Nice tape you got there. And by the way, does it work? Oh, it's already powered on. As soon as I plug the battery in, it powered up. Well, um, do we get lock lights? No. See, they're flashing. You probably can't see them flashing, but here, let me show you. Yeah. See that? See that? Three flashes, right? One, two, three... Yeah. Now it's responding. But there's nothing on the screen. No, it's not responding. Yeah, see? It can really fool you. So this thing's shot. I'm going to turn it off with the power button by holding it. All the lights just went off. Let's kill it. Get it out of here. That's the end of the Elite Book Folio. Not exactly a machine that I uh, particularly care to ever have to deal with again, but whatever. All right, and I'm going to put the, the Torx back for that. You're probably wondering what all these bits are that I have lying around everywhere. Well, the answer to that is these go to another computer that's over here. And just as a bonus, let's go ahead and talk about that. <coughs> I can unplug the power cord from it. Hang on. This is Lenovo Yoga. This Lenovo Yoga, um, as far as I can tell, is fine. So there's a form from the Geek Squad sitting over here with the customer's info on it, so I can't show it to you, saying that this machine was getting up to 45 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is hot for a computer with the back cover off and open airflow at idle. Well... You know, it's a laptop. It's a thin laptop. They generate a lot of heat, and they don't have a big cooling system. That's not unusual. But then, they said that it was peaking out at 100 degrees. Well, I ran a burn-in test after blowing this out with some high-pressure air. I ran a burn-in test, and it never got above 56, I think. And these chips can go up to 105 degrees. So, yeah... That's the thing that happened. Never take your fucking computer to Geek Squad. Oh my god! Alright. That's that. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you later.